Pop quiz. How many megabytes do you think it takes to stream an episode of Cobra Kai to your phone? How about uploading a TikTok, listening to a podcast? If you're like most people, you have no idea. And yet, when you go in to buy a cell phone, the sales rep will present a bunch of different data plans to you, as if you know how many gigs you're gonna use over the next 30 days. That's why most people end up going with what seems like the safest option, unlimited data. Sounds good, right? I mean, I use my phone a lot, and I don't wanna count megabytes. Sure, it's more expensive than the capped plans, but at least I'll know that I won't run out of data in the middle of a road trip or an important video conference. Before you make that call, there's a few things you should know about those unlimited data plans. It's data. 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 First, unlimited plans are not exactly unlimited. They usually still have a data cap, and once you go over that, your speeds will slow down, depending on how busy the network is. Secondly, many carriers will sometimes give capped accounts higher speeds than unlimited ones. The reason is that when capped customers go over their limit, they can be charged extra. So there's incentive for the carrier to let them rip through their data as quickly as possible. Unlimited customers have already paid everything they're gonna pay, so why make it easy for them to use data? It's kind of like an all-you-can-eat buffet that deliberately uses small plates to keep the diners from eating too fast. Third, and this is the big one, you probably don't need that much data anyway. According to a 2018 study, the average usage by unlimited data customers was only 6.1 gigabytes per month. That may seem strangely low, but it's because you only use your mobile data when you're not connected to a Wi-Fi network. And Wi-Fi is everywhere. At home, at work, on campus, at the gym, in the coffee shop. Sure, there's a small number of people who might rely on mobile data. Like if you do a lot of business on the road, or you don't have broadband at home and use your phone to stream movies. But for most of us, mobile data represents a small percentage of our overall usage. So then why are most of us subscribed to unlimited plans? Mainly because that's what the service providers want us to do. Unlimited plans are heavily promoted by the big carriers, often bundled with phone discounts and free subscriptions to streaming platforms. In fact, you have to dig pretty deep into their websites to find any alternatives. And most of the big wireless companies have started making their capped data plans prepaid only, which means you have to pay for a whole year of service up front. They really want you to choose unlimited. And why wouldn't they? With the cheapest premium network access plan offering 50 gigs a month, that means the average customer is using less than a quarter of the data they're paying for. That would be like paying for 100 gallons of gas every month, even though you only use 20. And you don't get credit for the gas you didn't use. It goes right back to the oil company. Now, if you happen to be one of these people who actually uses 50 to 100 gigabytes of mobile data a month, you might want to cut down on your screen time, but you are getting a really good deal. That's way less per megabyte than the average rate, but only because all those other customers are paying for megabytes they're not using, essentially subsidizing your low price. This is similar to the business model of many gyms and fitness clubs. Most of their members barely use the services they pay for, which keeps the price low for those who work out regularly. So how much money can you actually save by foregoing unlimited data plans? Data, I think it's time to run the numbers. One year ago, Kevin got a new phone from one of the major wireless carriers, and the sales rep strongly encouraged him to go with an unlimited plan. Kevin travels a lot for work and relies on his phone when he's on the road, so he figures he's probably a slightly above average data user. He opts for the mid-tier option, 50 gigs of data without slowdown for $75 a month, plus fees and taxes. A year later, Kevin happens to check his data usage and finds that he used on average about 7.5 gigabytes a month, only 15% of the total he's paying for. At first, he thinks that can't be right, but then he starts remembering all the places he typically uses his phone. Airports, cafes, hotels, convention centers, all with Wi-Fi. Not wanting to spend money on something he doesn't use, he digs through the carrier's website and finds that they have an eight gig prepaid plan for only $25 a month. 
if you pay for the whole year up front. That's $300 now versus $900 over the course of the year. An easy decision for Kevin, who happens to have enough cash on hand. There is one drawback to Kevin's plan. At only eight gigabytes a month, he will have to be a bit more careful about how he uses his data. Fortunately, there are some simple options in your phone settings to minimize usage outside of Wi-Fi, like turning off push notifications, automatic app updates, and GPS when you're not using them. Kevin also decides to bring a book with him when he travels, so he'll have something else to do with his downtime than doom scrolling through Twitter. And that brings us to another major way your cell phone is ripping you off. Not by stealing your money, but your time. Almost every app and social platform on your phone is explicitly designed to keep you engaged, well past the point of any benefit. Let's be honest, just staring at the clouds is probably a better use of your time than arguing with your cousin on Facebook or fueling your FOMO on Instagram. If switching from unlimited to prepaid will save you money and motivate you to cut down on unproductive distractions, I'd call that a win-win. Over the last 20 years, cell phones have gone from a luxury to a necessity. But unlike most other utilities, the way we're charged for wireless service is inherently vague. As someone who likes to keep track of what I'm getting for what I'm paying, I hate that. Fortunately, you don't have to stumble around in the dark. Check your data usage, look into alternate companies and plans. It may take a bit of digging and a fair share of discipline, but when it comes to your cell phone, you, not your carrier, should be the one making the calls. And, and that's, that's our, our two cents. cents. Data. It's data. It's data. Okay, it's not the Star Trek character. It's data. Hey guys, it's us again. So, so many of you leave such really wonderful, thoughtful comments, questions, and we just wanted to take a little time at the end of the video to address them. Miriam Korber, hello. She put that this video is applicable to my situation pretty specifically. I pay $850 in rent, which is over half my income. Oof, that's tough. Yeah. We, we generally recommend trying to keep your housing at under 25% of your income, but $850 is not a high rent. I mean, that's no. an affordable rent. And to me, this kind of drives home the point of, you know, this viewer and if anyone's in this situation, doesn't necessarily need to just do better themselves. Yeah. We as, as a society need to do better for people who are in situations like that. Yeah, and um, there's a really great book about this whole issue called Evicted. It actually won a Pulitzer Prize. His main thought is that we need to basically expand these voucher programs for really low income families that will cap how much of their income can go to their basic needs. And he said like something like 70% of the households who are going through eviction have children. Eviction does happen in poverty, but it can also create poverty. I think this is a, a good one to leave on. So Daniel Grooms put, it's important to keep asking why until you actually reach the bottom of the issue. Why can't landlords make money off cheaper housing? Why won't communities allow low income housing to be built? Why communities won't allow this? You know, a lot of us are scared. That's something we need to work on. That's something that we, we, we shouldn't just be okay with, mm -hmm. that uh, that's just the way things are, because totally. that can change and it doesn't need to be that way. So ask questions that you would like us to look at and maybe even answer in our next episode. Yes, indeed. See you later, bye. bye. Thanks to our patrons for keeping Two Cents financially healthy. Click the link in the description to become a Two Cents patron. If you want to learn more about how fitness clubs get people to pay for things they don't use, check out our video, The Hidden Costs of Joining a Gym.